Father, we thank you for this evening. We bless your holy name for the things that you do for us that money cannot buy. We are grateful, O oh God, for your awesome great deeds in our lives. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. By the message of God today, we will be looking at the final session for this series. God brought this series to us was absolutely unplanned and we thank god for for these things that he does sometimes the kind of purity that is required by god to upgrade us will come with a different fire. And God responds keenly to the kind of fire on the altar. Whether it is a strange fire or it is a fire that he himself has ordained fire that he himself has set in order and we believe him for his own fire and not a strange fire now sometimes we can say that we we cannot argue with results but i've said many times that in god's balance we can argue with results. God do, does not just want fire or any fire on the altar. There is a certain way by which his own fire can come down upon the woods. You remember the sons of uh, the priests who had not understood clearly that God is much more interested in how than the result. They went about setting a fire on the altar of God, thinking that all that matter, all that mattered to God at that time was just for fire to, to be seen on the altar. They didn't know that if you did not culture that fire in a particular way, in a way that he himself has prescribed, what begins to happen will be that heaven will give a verdict on the fire and it will be weighed and it will be measured. And in such fire is termed strange, then the repercussion or the consequence of strange fire will come upon, upon whoever does that. And that was what we saw in the case of the sons of this, of, 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 the, of the priests that set strange fire on the altar of God. God is particular about the kind of fire that is on the altar. God is also particular about the results and how we come about our results. I will be reading from Levitical chapter 10, verse 1. That's exactly where the story is. 
I believe strongly that there is something God wants us to bring out of that. And then we go into the business of the day by his mercies. Leviticus chapter 1, uh, chapter 10 rather, verse 1. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now, anybody that just believes that, oh, there must just be fire on the altar as a prerequisite um, in the temple will say, well, at least they are sons of prophets, they are sons of the priest, they are sons of, um, the, of, the, of, of Aaron, and Aaron has been given the Aaronic order, the priesthood order. Any member of their church or anybody that just sees the results coming out, which is fire, will say, wow. So at least we have people that can, that can, that can provide the fire. It, it had nothing to do with um, the old and the new. It had nothing to do with Aaron the old or the sons of Aaron uh, being the new. No, he had everything to do with how they went about it. What kind of fire is on the altar was the question. This particular fire was measured. It was weighed from heaven and it was adjudged to be a profane fire. It was not the fire that was prescribed by the Lord in the way it should be. Which means God is particular. God is, God is interested in how we set our woods in order. Hallelujah. So because of that, any strange fire or any profane fire on the altar will invoke consequence. There will be consequence for every strange fire. And the consequence is fire will come from the Lord to devour whoever produces such fire. And then it will purify the altar. Hallelujah. And by this time, Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who I come near, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Then Moses called Messiah, El, El, El Saban, the son of U, 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 Uziel, and the, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, come near, carry your burden from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them by their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had said. Moses said to Aaron and to Eliezer and to Ithamar, his sons, do not uncover your heads, nor tear your clothes, lest you die, and the rout come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the morning which the Lord has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the meeting lest you die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according to the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. So God is more interested in the how. You see? And it is very important, and that is why for a week now we've been looking at different aspects of our lives that may be that may be harboring wet woods 
different aspects of our life where we may have serpents underneath. And we've been crying to God as God has been showing us that the fire of the Lord will come upon our woods to chase out every serpent and everything that has resulted into allotry, resulted into concubinage, resulted into idolatry, including ministry, including the, 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 the legitimate needs and wants. I was talking with someone this morning and I was saying to the person that following Jesus is not easy. And there is no other way to say it. I am yet to see a generation that will come forward and say, oh, it is very easy. There are means and ways to doing it. That the world has found a solution to um, improving the turnaround time of, of, of processes does not mean that the process in the spirit can be Googled or the process in the spirit can be, uh, can be fast-tracked. No, it cannot be fast-tracked. The way is narrow and the path is straight and few are those that will be on it. That cannot change. That is an ancient landmark. It will always abide, it will always remain. Just like you cannot produce a month old baby, a, 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 a month old, you cannot produce a baby in one month by impregnating nine women. Just like that, you cannot also fast track the process of God because you have, you have found a way of fast tracking your, your processes in the world or on earth as it, as it were. No, it cannot happen. The standard of God is sure. God is not um, a, 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 a hardware that you, that, you, that you upgrade. Neither are his ways in such a way that you can update or you can find a shortcut for those that understand programming language. You cannot program it and enter into shortcuts because there are no shortcuts in God. Because shortcuts in the long run will take you much longer than if you are taking a normal path. So there are no shortcuts in God. The method cannot be reinvented. The wheel cannot be reinvented. I am yet to see um, a place in the scriptures where it's explicitly written that the whole time religion and the new time religion, which one is better, like we have uh, made it, is only one way. I am the way. And as you go on the way, you will begin to see him in the process. And so is the author and the finisher of that process. He is the one that have chosen that process and not you. So you cannot reinvent it. And it needs to be said because this is where we, this is where there will be mass production of half-baked disciples. People that will enter into the school, but they will not graduate. God's method or God's process of, of graduating men from his own school is not by writing exam, cramming the exam, cramming every way, and, and writing it and, and thinking that, oh, you, you will make first class. No, God's method is by the fruit that you bring out from the school. That is how you will graduate. If you will not produce the right fruit, you will keep repeating the class. You will keep repeating the class until the fruit can be found. And if the fruit will not be found, you will be, you, the, the pruning will continue. And if time is of the essence in the assignment that God needs you to do, God can give the assignment to someone else that is ready. He has that prerogative. 
So you cannot come and you, in, you can complain about your religion. You can complain about your church. You can complain about the doctrinal issues about, about your church. But you cannot come to a place of reinventing the will of God on the, on the premise that, oh, this, this process uh, is, too, is too tough, is too, is too much. Uh, uh, this thing is too much and it needs to be uh, uh, restructured. No, 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 no. You cannot. The, the, the standard of the law stands sure. Having this seal that the Lord knows who I is, and let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. There is a standard, there is a way. You have to show that you pass through the school of the spirit, the school of God, you have to show that you have entered into the law of the spirit of life, of life in Christ Jesus by the fruit that you show. Not, not by cramming, not by your gifts. No. You can walk your way through gifts. I have said it many times. You can walk your way through gifts. You can even learn gifts. You can, you can be a taxon. We call them taxon in those days. Children that are, that are given over to the, to the priest or to the prophet. They will learn from the prophet. Like Samuel stood with, uh, lived with Eli. You have children like that that you, you have just given them as if you bequeath something to a church. And then the children will learn. And learn. You can learn gifts, but you cannot learn fruits from man. You can learn gifts from man. They can teach you. There was a place where someone says, that, uh, that he, 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 I mean, he, uh, many, many years ago, I was told that, that there was this, you know, ministry that was teaching people how to speak in tongues, like, like language, like how you can learn English, how you can learn stuff. And, and, I, and I Googled and I laughed and I chuckled around and I, and I told the person, I said, well, it's possible because those are the things that we will see as the end time draw near. People will learn how to prophesy. People will learn how to do all those things from man because some people will suddenly have the programming tool, okay? Some people will suddenly have a way and, and, and tool of, 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 of staging these things up and they will make a lot of money from people and milk a lot of people dry. Gifts can be learned by men. They can have their own gift. They can call out their own gift. They can, they can prophesy their own tongue. After all, we have 450 prophets of Ahab. Not prophets of God. If you go to your Bible very well, you will see they were not prophets of God because Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord that we can inquire from? So there are the world and everyone inside of it can reinvent the wheel of their own gifts. You can find your own way into something, not, not with God, not with God. God's standard is sure. He cannot reduce it for any generation. God's production is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not say this one is outdated. He doesn't say this one is old. This one is new. Nope. Nope. You can call a part New Testament. You can call the part Old Testament. The word of the Lord stands in heaven. There is no Old Testament in heaven. There is no New Testament in heaven. Is the word come, become flesh, and, and, and dwelling among us is the same word. The same way he spoke to the Father, the same way he's speaking to the sons, and the same way he will continue to show himself. God is not a grandfather. He will always show himself the same way he showed himself to Abraham. He will show himself to Isaac and to, 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 and to Jacob. And he will not say, I'm the God of your grandfather. He will say, I'm, your God, I'm the God of your father. Hallelujah. This needs to be said because God will not reduce his standard for any generation. So the, 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 the earlier we know this, the better for us. 
it is not easy following Jesus. And Jesus never promised that he's going to make it easy. In this world, you will have tribulation. You will see tribulation. In this world, it was clear. He didn't say you may. He didn't say you may not. All right? And the kind of joy that we are promised is the joy that will come out of triumphs, out of temptation. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and temptation. It's part of the process. As a child of God, can you pray away trials? Can you pray away temptation? No, you cannot. The day you pray it away, you are doomed. Show me one child of God that says, oh, I can grow without trial. I can grow without temptation. I can grow without falling. I can grow. Show me that child of God and I will show you heresy. I will show you Ichabod. The glory that has departed. There is nothing like that. Count it all joy. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So for that joy in the Holy Ghost to be shown and to be measured and judged, to be done rightly, you must fall into diverse trials and temptation. But what is the qualification of a righteous man? Is it that the righteous man is a man that does not fall at all? No. He said a righteous man falls seven times and rises up. Because it is in the trial of your faith that you will now begin to go into the process and begin to grind, begin to grind. It will prune this part today. It will prune that part tomorrow. It will set one on fire today. It will set the other fire on tomorrow. So you will begin to learn the language from his mouth just as he has said it. It may take one year. It may take five years. It may take 10 years to the point when, when, you, when you have now come to that point, you will just see that suddenly you are not falling anymore in places where you used to fall before. When you even get to that point of mastery, you will not even know. Why? That's why it says, let he that think he stands, take heed, lest he fall. There is no presumption in God because his grace has appeared. And the grace that has appeared is not the grace that condones sin. It's not the grace, the grace that teaches us. The grace that teaches us. Title chapter 2, verse 11. Honestly, this is not... This is not part of what I intend to say, but Jesus, I'm used to it. When you're coming and you, and you take the wheel, I'm always very, very grateful to you. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Not some, all men. And he has come with something. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Not only that, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself, his own special people, zealous for good works. You can't purify without fire being involved. You can't. You cannot purify without fire being in involved. So the child of God will, 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 will enter into this dimension called process. And this process will become study. And he will show himself approved, not to man, not to people, not to, not to his pastor, not to his church member, but unto God. <laughs> As a faithful workman, a workman. that can rightly divide the word of truth, not a man that can argue the word of truth, not the man that can debate the word of truth, not the man that can, that can coat it on his head so that people can know that, oh, he has come to a place or a, a, a scholarly place. No, not a man that goes to seminary and, and puts everything on his head and we don't see anything. You have to go through the process God's own way. You have to graduate from that class God's own way, else you will keep repeating the class. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how God always has few people in his class. Few people. Narrow is the way. It cannot be brought. And it cannot, it cannot be. Narrow is the way. 
Hallelujah. And you will see in the days and in the life of Jesus, he showed this clearly. 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 Clearly he shows this. Before I continue, I believe, I perceive in my spirit that we need to pray. But Lord, you will take me through your own way by yourself. You will help me through your laid down process. And I will not deviate from it. By your mercies, Lord. You will help me so I won't reinvent the easy way for myself. I will follow hard after you. I will seek you with all my heart. You will help me. If you recall, yesterday we were talking about the part two of the man that God uses. And as we were talking, there was a place that we digressed into briefly, and that is the place that we are going to camp around today. Not really a digression, we touched it. But God is now going to expound that place very, very clearly to us today. As we look at the man that God chooses. Recall yesterday when we were reading in Luke chapter 7 about a particular, a certain Simon that Jesus was speaking to and saying to him that I came to your house. You did not offer me any water. You did not anoint my feet. You did not kiss me. These were three accusations that Jesus put forward. I am reading from Luke chapter 7 from verse 36. Then one of the Pharisees asked him, that's Jesus, to eat with them. And he went to the Pharisee's house. They invited him for lunch, all right? And sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. <laughs> when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now, when the, disciples, when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon. <laughs> so it was very clear to us, or it is very clear to us right now that the name of the Pharisee was Simon, not the Simon Peter that we knew. <laughs> he invited Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He invited Jesus for lunch. If you think it's down to inviting Jesus to your life, you may need to think again at this point. He invited Jesus. Is that not what we say? Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in to stay. Come in today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. That is just one step. 
when you invite him, what is the content of the invitation? Jesus will choose those that choose him above all else. Jesus will choose those that choose him above all else. It is not enough for you to invite him. It will be enough or more than enough when you show the content of your invitation. When you show what is the content of your heart. I, I, I believe strongly that these Pharisees just want to have a feel-good day with Jesus. And I've said it many times. When you, when you get the attention of Jesus, how do you use it? This man invited Jesus. Jesus would, Jesus seldom goes to Pharisees' place because he knows that they didn't like him. They didn't like him. Those were people that wanted him dead in the first place. But for this man, Jesus honored the invitation. Yet, a woman get crushed. <laughs> Come on. She was not on the honors list. She was adjudged to be a sinner. By standard of a day, she couldn't have made that lunch that day. There was no way she would be found at the table or in the room or around that place. She get crushed. Desperately looking for Jesus. Are you the one that invites him or the one that goes out of your way, regardless of whether there is you are invited or not, you get crushed. You are desperate enough to, to see him in your life. There are people that they invite Jesus and they wait for him to honor the invitation, and he honors the invitation and 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 is futile. Just come saying and they sit down, they chat, they go. There are people that are desperate enough. Desperate enough, but the, the, the content of their desperation is because of need. It's because of want. Oh, Lord. Oh, but there are people that they won't invite them. They are written off completely. Oh, nobody knows them. They have no color. They have no title. She be this man, uh, Pharisee, is a title. He had title. He had color. Maybe because of his seminary and because of the work that he has done as uh, one of the rabbis and one of those that have a certain, uh, maybe not rabbi, but you know, a particular sect that is known for for highly esteeming knowledge in the you know uh, of the things of God. Maybe he felt that that was the was good enough reason for Jesus to knock on the door or for, for Jesus to honor his invitation rather. Maybe he felt that, okay, I mean, I am pastor, reverend, right reverend. I've been following Jesus for 55 years or for 30 years. And at least, in fact, my father uh, was the one that brought uh, apostolic faith to Nigeria. And so because of that, in fact, he was uh, one of the leading legends that, uh, that named me and uh, gave me, I mean, I had, my, I had my baptismal class and I was fully baptized in the River Jordan of all rivers. The river that Jesus also was baptized in. All those things, as good as they are, they will not matter. They are non-essentials when you begin to look at the content of the drive for the invitation. This woman was desperate. So I'm talking to those that invite Jesus for frivolous things just because they feel it's their rights. Some believe it's their rights. I'm a Christian. I am I'm following this sect called Christianis. I've been religious enough. I've done everything he said I, I, I should do. You know, you know, there are some people that they pray a prayer that you know sits on some set of, 
of perceived right dictum or a perceived right um, that they think they've earned. Oh Lord, you've said when I was in uh, in the Yoruba class as a child, we used to sing one song. You will permit me, I will sing the song, I will interpret it. It means, Lord God, please come swiftly and answer my prayer. Do not put me to shame as I pray to you. You were the one that told me not to bring not to bring charms or use charms. You were the one that told me not to go with a fortune teller. You are the one that told me not to follow herbalists or to follow those that are not on the way or the path of God. I have done everything that you asked me to do. Please don't disgrace me. You know, there are some of us that we've mastered the act of laying demand of God on God based on some right, you know, some right that we've earned with our life. Oh, Lord, you know, I've not smoked. You know, I've not done anything bad. You've told me from childhood I've followed your way. You know, I've, I've followed your way. There is no way my life, my life, uh, you know, can, cannot be. How do we sing that song? I cannot... Um, um, I cannot call on your name and end up in shame. I mean, how do we call that? How would be, uh, there is a there is a there is a song like that. I'm not saying it's wrong, okay? I'm not saying it's wrong. All right. But what is the content of such a uh, discussion? You know, what is the content of such words when you speak it to God? Is it that you feel pompous enough that you have you have earned the right or you have walked the mile of you or you are or, or you have earned to the right to call God or to petition him? It's just more like thank you, Tolu. It's just more like saying, Oh God, you know I have options. Don't mess me up. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Someone says to me, things like, I have been serving you all my life, being in your house all these years, and my prayer have not been answered. God bless you for this person typing this. God bless you. And you, you, you might not have known that part. You know, you, you are born again. Me, I say it the way it is. Eh? Mm, but please, don't be angry. Eh? Uh -huh. Just bear with me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just bear with me. Eh? Mm -hmm. Entitlement mentality. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, that kind of a thing. Eh? I have followed you. Like that guy, like that, uh, the elder brother of the prodigal son. Eh? I've been in the house. All the reason, much, the major reason he was in the house was because of the fat cow. The fat cow! How do I know? Because that was the thing that the father touched that made the guy to talk. All along, we didn't know that he was in the house. A good boy, a gentle boy, a wonderful boy is the one that will be pointing. Ah, uh, 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 we are wala one day at this. Uh, we have followed this God. We know how we work. We can actually pretty much predict His way. Uh, I mean, if you want Him invited, just attain a level uh, in Him. Uh, be be pure. Uh, be holy. Be, so, what do you say when God takes the talk? When God when God breaks protocol and begin to bring a Virgin Mary that did not even know any man and begin to sideline every everything that you know about biology. I mean, what do you say to that? There is no level of mentality that you can place on God. There is no entitlement syndrome that you can place in God. There is nothing like it. Good as they are, you can use it elsewhere. It doesn't work in God. Oh, I have been following you. There is no way because God will check the. He will check it. He will check the content and where it's coming from, and 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 that you are getting results when you use it. I have. Where did we start from? We start from. You can argue with results. You can set strange fire and set strange strange precedents. You can teach a whole generation on something that is strange to God and something that is totally wrong in the order of God, and that is what I've seen in my generation. 
people growing up to say, yes, we can, we can, we can draw caution on God. God, if you don't do it, I, I will leave you. I, will, I, I mean, I have options. I, I can't be following you. If it's not working, let me know it's not working. Let me just drop it. You can argue with results. And argue with results. How many people kept themselves so clean, so clean and so pure? They look for God in various places and everything. And they've just gone back because... We just feel well, this thing is not working. They've said we should we should do it somehow. I mean, we are doing it. So you are not different from a herbalist. They said we should do it like this, we should call it like this, we should call it seven times. Maybe seven is not working. We call the name of Jesus seven times. We add the blood of Jesus to it. We say the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we finish, we say surely, goodness and mercy. I, I don't understand. In the first day, who said you should even be closing your service with the grace? That's another topic for another day. So we have we have we have mastered some Christianese language and some Christianese way. Break that protocol. Doesn't work in God. Good as they are. The best of what you will produce is religion. Mark my word. The best, good as they are. I'm not an advocate of religion. I'm not a preacher of it. I detest it with every passion that I have in me. Relationship. One ounce of relationship is greater than massive tons of, re of, of religion. <laughs> There's any cry of my heart in this time and in this age is for my generation to have an experiential knowledge. Just one title of it. Oh Lord God Almighty, it will fetch you, it will be enough for your entire generation. Just one word, one pure word from the Lord, one pure word. You, you, the entire gen your generation forever can latch onto that word forever because, oh, forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. Your word is settled by, 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 is settled because God says so, not because you have a, 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 a mentality or, 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 or a, 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 an entitlement mentality towards God. The word of God is settled. God cannot be made less God or more God by whatever you do or whatever you do not do. It's God all by himself. I stand before God. I always tell him, me, 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 Dubai, Lord. What I'm saying is, it is me. I'm not more than this. I can't be calling the shot for you. I can't be standing like Peter to say, oh, this thing that you are bringing down for me from heaven. Although I see that you are bringing it down from heaven, it's still unclean. Who are you? So this Pharisee had, had thoughts that the entitlement mentality that he had for not uh, getting the color or the term or the word sinner, for getting to a particular sect in the society that can uh, pen down invitation to Jesus to come to his house. And here was another woman that by societal standards, they've been called sinner. Hey, I'm a silly baron, Haven't you heard it many times that Jesus says, I did not come for those that are well. If you are well, I didn't come for you. What do you call that thing? Um, substitution by elimination. One, one, one mathematics topic like that when we're in school. Jesus just eliminated that particular group. They are well. I didn't come for them. But I came for those that are sick. So by, by the standards of, of, of the world, by the standard of the society, the person that is, 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 uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, qualified huh? to ascend onto the holy mountain, is the one that has a clean hand and a pure heart. How do you adjudge that? Do you adjudge that with religion? You say, a pastor needs a man of God. So, you know, there are some terms and there are some words that we've gotten for ourselves in religion that uh, we believe that whoever gets that thing must have attained or must have, must have paid the price to do that. It doesn't work in God. It can fetch you religion. There is God's own way and is the only one that knows the way. That is why it is his process, not your own.
So if by our own societal standards, we are cultured to say that we have to get to this point before we can start inviting Jesus, then Jesus is, we are in for a serious surprise when Jesus begins to pay attention to the ones that get crashed, to the ones that are sick, to the ones that are called sinners, to that one that is falling and rising, and that one that has never even heard the voice of Jesus at all. At all. He does not even know how Jesus speaks. To that one that does not even know how to pray, whether he's going to start with Lord forgive me or whether he's going to start with praises and, uh, and thanksgiving. Uh -huh. So there's no protocol, nothing. The woman was called a sinner. And the woman came. First, as he even entered, she couldn't even sit at the table. She had to stand behind Jesus. She had to stand behind Jesus, but Jesus did not disqualify her from doing the three things that the Pharisee thought were beneath him. The Pharisee thought he has earned the rights. And so those things were beneath him. Jesus wants someone that wants him, that needs him, that is desperate for him. The content of the desperation must be weighed. Is he need? Is he want? Or me? Who? Who? What is the motivation behind that desperation? This woman was able to show it. She did not ask for anything. She did three things that were very, very critical. Number one, she washed the feet of Jesus. Number two, we, and she washed the, the feet of Jesus with tears, with our tears, with our own tears. Come on now. With our own desperation, with our own struggle, with our own pain, with our own heart, with everything that is inside of us. She wiped the, 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 she wiped the feet of Jesus with the glory of, of her covering. Come on. Come on. And she kissed the feet of Jesus oh, with her lips. Ah, and then anointed heat. And that alabaster box, you, you will see how, how, how expensive it was because it was, it was the subject of discussion as, as they went on. To, 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 to bring more clarity into this, um, you will see that it was not only women like this. I mean, it was not only this woman that was in this category. In Luke chapter 8, you will see that when, when it was said that now it came to pass afterwards that he, Jesus, went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him and certain women who had healed, who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. That, in my own, that was the woman that was described. So we would understand the content of the tears, the content of the pain. She had tried everything. The dimension, the meaning of the seven demons, critically was when you when you enter into into darkness perfectly the number of seven you enter into you see perfect fall a perfect crash landing if you know you you cannot by every standard of religion you cannot even see god there was a void a vacuum inside of her that made her to first taste the first demon he saw that this demon cannot give me what I need. She entered into the second demon, thinking that, oh, eternal life will be there. He, he can't give me. Then she entered into the third demon. Okay, this madness will leave me alone. She entered into the fourth demon. And as she was entering, she was, she, she was, she was uh, exhibiting the, 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 uh, the, the signs and the dimensions of, 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 of patronage. She was ex exhibiting uh, the sale of a product. Okay? 
How do I know? They said she was a sinner. By what standard? Remember that woman that was brought to Jesus, adult, the adulteress. She also was called a sinner. So by the standard of this Pharisee, and, and, and be very careful, okay? When people label, label you, how do you label somebody a sinner when you have not patronized her? How do you know if you have not entered into her or gone into her or bought her product? How do you know that she's a sinner? Yoruba has a has an adage they say only no mercy only ton only apata which means when you want to quickly get a thief, it takes a thief to catch a thief. That's all. Jesus did not call her a sinner. The Pharisee called her a sinner, and people that were there called her a sinner, which means they also have patronized this woman at one at one. In fact, the Pharisee said, if if, if Jesus, if he were a real prophet, if 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 Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I don't want to lose anyone. What was the last word you heard? I can I can go back. Okay, wonderful. That's the adage. Okay, so the adage says only no more say only ton lori apata is a yoruba adage it means it takes a thief to catch a thief so if they had called this woman a sinner it mean it meant that they had patronized the way that way of of of, of sinning they had patronized uh, her and both of them had, had met on on that path before This man was even saying, if this man were a real prophet, at least he should know that this woman is a, is a sin. Which means there are two ways of knowing. Either you know by revelation or you know by, uh, uh, you know by knowledge. So they were expecting, they were expecting um, Jesus by, by revelation to know that that woman was a sinner. But they had known from, from a, a, a type of a knowledge, which is something they have experienced by association. Thank you. Aha, the word of knowledge and the word from knowledge. God bless you. Uh -huh, I like that. So they were expecting Jesus to know by word of knowledge while they knew from knowledge. The woman had a vacuum in her heart. And that was all the content of the three things that she came to do with Jesus. This, my people, is the major singular qualification into the pathway of knowing Jesus. Period. That's all. The content. The content of the reason for which you have come to Jesus. Both of them came. One invited, the other one get crashed. It didn't matter who invited at the end of the day. It didn't matter who get crashed at the end of the day. It mattered what both of them did. You just came give me food. This one came and chose me and showed that she wanted me and showed she showed it that she didn't just want me because uh, she needs to be delivered from the demon. She didn't just want me because she, she wanted to pay for a school fee. She didn't just want me because of either legitimate reason or illegitimate reason. She wanted me because she wanted me. Period. This is the kind of at all cost wanting. Matthew chapter 26. To give you clarity. And, and, and did you see something in that look? When Jesus was storing and doing his crusade, 
He said the disciples also were with him, and then there were some women that were delivered of evil spirit. Oh, Lord God. It does not matter. God can choose to use anyone, anyhow he chooses. He does not go by your religious dictum or your pathway. No, he, 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 can, he can deliver men and use them for his glory. And, and mind you, this particular woman was not an apostle, but you will see what she did at the end of the day. Matthew chapter 26. That story was relieved all over again. But six, when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper. So this was very clear now. The name of the, of the, uh, of the disciple was Simon, the, of the Pharisee rather, was Simon the leper. A woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil. And she poured it on the head, on his head, as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, so we have gone to what the, what the Pharisees did. So let's see what the disciples did. They were indignant. Why this waste? Ah! No button. Can you see the content of what was going on in the mind of the, these almighty disciples? Mm. Be careful what you label yourself before God. Pharisee, disciple, sinner, whatever it is, it makes no difference to God as long as your content is weighed and is found that you want him. Be a Pharisee, just want him. Be a disciple, just want him. Be a sinner, just want him. And be desperate and want him and go for him at all costs. It does not matter what your color is. No matter what your label is. They were indignant. I thought they will, they will, cons they will consider Jesus. They even they were considering the waste of the expensive oil. So much for a disciple that everything that was at the heart, at the base of the thoughts of these disciples of Jesus was not the thing that Jesus would say, was not the perspective of Jesus, was, was always about the wastes, the expensiveness of the things that this woman was doing. For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Uh -huh. So much for disciples. Isn't that what it has become? We analyze the things we get from Jesus and the things that could have been, you know, uh, could have accrued to us. Rather than being attentive to the content of the words of Jesus to us. We care more about things more about 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 property more about this we know much more about them we are more familiar with the world that we are in than the world that, that, that than, than our home country in heaven we are much more familiar with the things here than the things in heaven Heaven should be more real to us than the earth, than where you are seated. Yes. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. <laughs> do you see that? Do you see, do you see how Jesus was, Jesus enjoyed the matter? You see how Jesus judged the matter, rather. You see, you see, you see how Jesus laid the, the, the truth. How do I know it's the truth? Because the truth is the one saying it. This discussion as regards to Jesus was not up for debate. Whatever he says is the truth. Whatever you know is your own logic. Good work is putting everything at all costs on Jesus. 
putting your entire desperation, your tears to worship him, oh, to need him, your, your oil, everything that you have, throwing yourself at him, kissing him, doing everything I told you, asking him, are you okay? Not saying to him all the time, um, you too, you will, um, you will also, you, 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 too, you too should also ask if I'm okay now. Eh? Jesus, at least I've been following all that. No, you don't even care that I perish. Jared's not doubt that we perish. You just look at them and, peace be still, Jared. Eh? See, just, see, just be quiet because I don't understand this. You don't even care about me. For you have the poor with you always. But me, you do not have with you always. Did you, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Those who choose religion cannot choose Jesus. It's not possible. You can't choose the both. See, every other thing that takes you out of the sight of Jesus, the dome, the preaching, the ministry, every other thing as legitimate as they are, once they don't set your affection on Jesus, it is religion. Quote me anywhere. To that Pharisee that invited Jesus, he will think that he has opened a church in his house in the name of Jesus. Whatever church you open, and Jesus is not the center, because in this particular, that lunch, he was not, he, Jesus was not the center of it. He did not bring, he was particular about how the lunch will go, how the table will go, and every, he was not particular about Jesus at all. The same thing the disciples here. They were not particular about you. They were particular about the poor. They were particular about the fragrant oil. They were particular about everything. Anything that takes your attention and affection from Jesus is religion. And you can never find Jesus inside religion. Quote me anyway. Jesus is not in any religion. Jesus is in a relationship. It's not in any religion. That's why you can see Muslims seeing Jesus in their dream. Yes, quote me. That's why you can see them reading Quran and Jesus coming out of the Quran. That you are a, that you are that you are that you are practicing Christianity does not mean that you have the exclusive right to Jesus. No. And you will see all those disciples, all those Pharisees, by the burial of Jesus, none of them was there. None of them. John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb of Jesus early. Did you see the name of Peter there? the apostle, the foremost apostle. It's good though that he, he brought Christianity or he brought the salvation to the Gentiles. He brought uh, whatever, all those names, all those great works, wonderful stuff as they are. But according to what we are looking at, Jesus will choose those that choose him. Peter and his disciples were just a type that Jesus used to show that if he decides to pray for somebody that the devil will not have him, the devil will not have him based on that alone. Not because the person did everything to choose him. Said we have left everything and followed you. What was the content of leaving everything to follow to follow Jesus? It was because of bread. 
Nothing more. It was because of bread. After everything, the same Peter said, I go a fishing. If not for the prayer that Jesus had prayed. But we are seeing a woman here. We are seeing a woman here that get crushed desperately using everything of her life. She wasted herself on Jesus. Come on now. She wasted the content of her entire life on Jesus. Yes, she did not preach one gospel. It's okay. She did not convert any soul. In fact, she did not write any epistle in the Bible, but she chose her Jesus. And she chose her Jesus to the point of death. She waited for him. Ah, come on. Jesus will take note of this. He will take note of those that, 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 that sought after him, those that look for him, those that are seeking him in spirit and in truth. Oh, Lord. And they are ready to pour themselves. This woman had seen how Jesus had delivered her from that vacuum in her heart. There are people that the only thing, they have money. Oh, see, your religion, there is an extent to which your religion can, can penetrate the world. The kind of religion that is about money, 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 you will be rich. You will be the, 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 the promissory note Jesus. It cannot work. That's why it cannot work in developed countries that they provide for themselves. Jesus will give you car. Jesus will give you motor. Jesus will give you a uh, coach. Jesus will give you suit. Jesus will give you everything. Everything. Transactional Jesus. If the gospel must be preached all over the world, if the true revival must come, it must be the relational Jesus. It must be the Jesus that we will show to the world that yes, though we have everything, we still choose him in spite of the thing that we have. Though government has provided every other thing, there is something government cannot provide. It's called eternal life. Though we, we, we have programs in the world that can, that can uh, algorithm, that can predict when rain wants to fall, even if, if, if we are in this, 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 this uh, desertificated land or we are in, in the Sahara and we want rain to fall, there are some chemicals that we can use for rain to fall. Yet, we still chose Jesus because you cannot make righteousness to fall. You can cause rain to fall, but you cannot make righteousness to fall. You can do everything to invent anything in your heart. You can still have vacuum in your heart. It is Jesus that can fill vacuum. There are people in the world today that they have money. They have everything. Our Jesus cannot penetrate them because our Jesus is a transactional Jesus. Our Jesus is promising them money that they already have. Our Jesus is to promise them cars that they already bought. Our Jesus is to give them the thing they have, the things of life. But no, a time is coming now that these same people the vacuum in their heart they will begin to look for those that can quench the vacuum those that can quench the thirst oh my goodness and that's where one man that has eternity and the experience of eternal life just one experience with jesus will meet with them and one word with such man will, will pierce their heart. Hearts. They will, it will pierce their heart so much, they won't be able to sleep. They won't be able, they'll be rolling on their bed. I have never had this kind of word before. I've never seen this kind of man before. Where did this man come from? They will research. They will go on Google. They will go on Facebook. They will go everywhere. I have seen people. I have not seen this one. And it's even very small, very short. It's not even, it's not, it's not even pulling crowd like, 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 uh, like those we know. He does not even have a dome. He does not even have a name. How do we call this? Well, I've met people. I've met the, 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 the men of God. The, 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 you know, the, the, the timber, the men of timber and caliber. Eh? Men of Mahogany and Obeki. I've met them. I'm yet to meet this man. I speak so much to my essence. That can penetrate me like this. That's why she, she, she came to the, to the burial site. Because nothing mattered to her in this world anymore. Nothing. She had just seen that this person that has filled my thirst, this person that has quenched my thirst, and, 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 and taking this vacuum out of me, has left the world. 
Oh, what can I do without this person? And while it was dark, she did not even care. Oh, how will she care? Someone that was not afraid of seven demons, someone that was that had tasted everything, he's been there, he's done that. How will she care? The disciples on their own, they have they have analyzed, okay, is an is 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 so so much for Jesus with all his anointing, they kill him like a, a, they just killed him like rats. He couldn't even deliver himself. Is that not what you say? Now, if he's a man of God, we we can see, see look at him. See, this is what I've even committed the whole of my life to, and I've been following it. Ah, oh, I've been I've been fooled. Ah, I have been deceived. This woman, she did not even analyze anything. She did not analyze anything. She stood there. That in the moment that I met him, ha. Ah, what seven demons couldn't give me? Allah baran What Pharisees couldn't give me? I have, I have slept with the Pharisees. They have patronized me as an adulteress. I have even slept with some of, the, some of them that call themselves Sadducees. Ah, they couldn't give me. I have come to the disciples to even hear their own version of the Jesus that they knew. He was a transactional Jesus. He was a Jesus that would only give them money and give them bread. Oh, but when I met this one, Hey, who can give me what he has given to me in this world? She was not afraid of the dark. You, you still have option. You follow Jesus to a point, you start seeing cockroach in your room, it's wala. Ah, this thing, I, I don't think I'll follow like this. So, ah, no, 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 no. You go to a place and you hear one word, eh, eh, eh this one, eh, like, this one is, ah, I'm going back. Hey, let me just go and sit. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear anything. Hey, is this? Ah, no, it's not. Jesus is not this hard now. What is what's the meaning of this? I remember when we when, when we're in the university, people were always running away from me and my friend. The, 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 the Jesus that this ones no, we don't we don't even know, we don't even know again. I beg, I beg. I, it got to a point, in fact, some were even about to beat us up. Ah, ah. Call them like this, they will just make everything you have been doing useless. Like, like ah, ah. Ah, you say, no, it's not we that, that's not our plan. This the experience we are talking of the thing that we have experienced. Abi, was that not what John said? That which we have seen. Oh, that which we have heard. That which our hands have told. Oh, hey, the word of truth himself. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. First John. That's the Jesus I know. They were very, they were not always happy whenever they come around us. Ah, this is their own Jesus that will not allow you to do things the way you want. This is their own Jesus that is too hard. It's too hard. My friend, my friend, following Jesus is not easy. Settle it in your mind today. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It doesn't matter what trial, what temptation I find. He has told me that he is the anchor for my soul. And I will go through everything for him. And by that, I will show to him how desperate I need him. How desperate I want him. Whether anything is lost or anything is gained. You see? God bless Pastor Itua. Those are the kind of life that we are talking about. Either your wife lives or your wife dies. You, you follow him. Ah, you don't understand what has happened, but you are still saying, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will follow you till death. Nothing else again. I don't know anything again. That's what this woman has, has done. It was dark. She was not afraid of the dark. And saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Hey, immediately he saw like this. She ran. 
Peter therefore went out. Are you, are you seeing it? So that you don't think that I was just beefing the disciples. So Peter went out and other disciples, and they were going to the tomb. So they ran both together, and other disciples outran Peter and came to the tomb first. You see the drama that will happen here. And he, stooping down, that's Peter, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. Okay, this was John. It was John that, that stooped low. Simon Peter followed John, okay? Uh -huh. Following him, went into the tomb, and he saw that the li linen cloth, he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first, that was John, went in also, and he saw and believed. And as yet, they did not know the scriptures that he must rise again on the, from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their homes. I shall tell you, we have seen it. He's not there anymore. He has gone. So he has left us here. Jesus, after using my boats, after everything that I've given to you, after everything that I've shown to you, you even disappeared. You did not even tell me. No courtesy. And you left. So they went home. Oh, but Mary. Ah, Lord, make me Mary. Oh, make me Mary. Make me Mary. Make me Mary. God bless you, Tolu. I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly I want to read that. Oh God of my life, I'm love sick for you in this weary wilderness. I thirst with the deepest longing to love you more, with cravings in my heart that cannot be described. Such yearning grips my soul for you, my God. I am energized. That's Psalm chapter 63, verse 1. I am energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink more of your glory. For your tender mercies mean more to me than life itself. How I love and praise you, God. Daily, I will worship you passionately, and with all my heart, my hands will wave to you like banners of praise. Psalm chapter 4. Okay? I lie awake each night thinking of you and reflecting on how you help me like a father. I sing through the night under your splendor shadow, offering up to you my song of delight and joy. I overflow with oh, I've lost that oh I've, 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 I've lost that I was trying to read what she pasted there but the long and short of that was someone yearning for God someone showing God to God that he needs him for who he is I overflow with praise when I come before you for the anointing of your presence satisfied me like nothing else. Did you hear that? You are such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. With passion, I pursue and cling to you because I feel your grip on my life. I keep my soul close to your heart. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, speak great things to him the way you know. Just for two minutes. Come on, do that. Hallelujah. Ooh. Oh, Jesus. They all left. They all left. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. 
ah, how can I get my Lord? How can my Lord come to me? Ah, where has he gone? Others have options. They call themselves disciples. They have options. They can go. They have families to go to. I don't have. Catherine Kuman one day said, you have places to go. You have options. You have other things. Please don't grieve my Holy Spirit because I don't have anywhere else to go. I don't have any other thing. This woman was weeping. Ah, such a person that had a great grip on my life. Where will I get a man like this? And as she wept, she stood down and looked into the tomb. The same tomb that others looked. He looked she looked into it and saw two angels in white sitting. And look at this, wonderful. One at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lay. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? For some of us, that would be enough. At least I was looking for Jesus. I saw angels. Ah, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. At least others did not even find angels. She, she, she did not. She wanted Jesus or nothing else. Reminds me of the song that they taught us when I was in, in, in Sunday school. Some want riches. Some want fame. Some want virtues till the end. But I want Jesus to stand by. Give me Jesus, I am satisfied. I want Jesus, he is my friend, who will stand by me till the end. I want Jesus to stand by. Give me Jesus, I am satisfied. Everything in the heart of this woman was not angels. She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. Ah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. my Lord. The disciples did not even get close to this. They did not get close to this at all. My Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. And now when she has said this, she turned around. She was not saying, ah, I have seen angel. I will go and write a book. I will go and show to the disciples that yes, they did. Though I'm not a disciple, but I found something that they did not find. It was not time for that. She turned away from them and saw Jesus standing there hey, and did not even know that it was Jesus. She thought he was a gardener and she said, and, 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 and Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? This woman had left the, 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 the part of what are you seeking? The disciples were the ones that were on the pathway of what are you seeking? They were seeking for bread. So whoever is seeking for bread will go home. Whoever is seeking for every, every other thing aside from Jesus will go home. But whoever is seeking Jesus, whom do you seek? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Such depth 
such depth. Yes, I was quiet. Such depth. He, he did not even care. She was even saying to the gardener, if, if, where have you laid him? The content of her heart is not that she was looking for Jesus because Jesus hold her money. She was, it wasn't that she was looking for Jesus because Jesus promised her bread. No. She was looking for Jesus because Jesus was our Lord. She had gotten to the place of lordship. She had gotten to a place where she could abide in him, not even seeing angels, not caring whether angels were there or not. He was my Jesus or nothing. Those that choose Jesus Jesus will also choose them. When she said that, Jesus called her very essence. Jesus called her destiny. Jesus called her pre-existent. Jesus called her imminent. Jesus called everything that is inside of her. Mary! She turned and said to him, Rabuni, ha! which is to say, my teacher. Hey, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples what she had, that she, that she has seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. The disciples would later Preach to the entire world. The disciples would later turn the whole world around. But the person that preached to the disciples was Mary. The holy person that saw Jesus. The holy person that got to the place of lordship while Jesus was alive. Aside every other one. The holy person that we could see that did everything to desperately look for Jesus. And she saw him and she spoke to him and she went and converted the entire disciple. Can you see that? Without Mary, without the one that had the experience of Jesus, the disciples that will show to the world and shake the world would never have done that. They had gotten to their wit's end. They had gotten to the bread. They had gotten to the food. They, 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 they had been frustrated. Oh, but they needed someone that has seen beyond. What do you want to see? Or who do you want to see? I want to see a who. I don't want a one what. I want a who. For the past 31 years since, since I have known Jesus, this is the one I've been looking for. Not church, not religion, not, not that. I would never be satisfied except my Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Alone, alone, alone. Nothing else. My Jesus. My Jesus. Because that's the only person that can set fire upon my wood. There are some serpents that I cannot take away. I cannot deliver myself from myself. I cannot set myself free. I have done everything I know how to do. It's not working. Oh, but I have found the one that can set the fire in the right places and I will be completely delivered from myself to, be, to follow him all the days of my life. And that person is Jesus. Are you here? Set your heart on him. Set your heart on him. Jesus, you or no one. You or no one. In my life, show me how to want you. Show me how to need you. Show me how to, 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 to outsmart or, or wear out darkness. Show me how to stand beyond darkness. 
Show me how to withstand darkness. Show me how to stand and, and, and go beyond angels. That even when I see angels, I won't go back. I will still, even when I see God now, I will say, where do you keep my Jesus? Show me, Lord. You. Yes, Lord. Nothing more. Nothing more. Only you in my life. Only you in my circle. Only you, Lord. Nothing else. No one else will quench my thirsts. Only you is a prayer that we must make always, always. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord. No one else in my circle. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord. Only you. No one else, Lord Jesus. No one else. Hallelujah. No one else, Jesus. Only you in my life. Oh, no one else. Oh, no one else. You alone. I want to see you. I want to touch you. I want to hear you. I want to handle you, Lord. Only you, Lord God Almighty. Only you. Search deeply the content of my yearning, the way you did to David. Get to the bottom of it, Lord. Let nothing else matter. Only you. Only you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's a continuous stream. It's a continuous prayer. It's a continuous fire. Talking about it. Only you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's a pleasure having everyone for five days at a stretch. We thank God for what he has done in, on, in us and will continue to do in us. Let your fire keep burning for no one else but Jesus. Let the, let, the, let the fire burn our woods till religion jumps out, till tradition jumps out, till culture jumps out, till nature of men jumps out, till everything that will not describe God in us jump out out of us in the name of Jesus I commit you all to God and to his grace from today that you will go from experience to experience in him alone in him alone you will make your boast in his mercy alone you will make your boast in the name of the Lord God bless you God keep you it's been a very intense season. 
It's been very intense. The energy of God has been so much upon me this, this, this period, and I thank God. Thank God for his grace. I thank God for what he's been teaching and what he's been saying. And I believe that what he says to one, he says to all. And I believe that your ears have been opened, your eyes have been opened within these five days and God will begin to take you from his glory to his glory, from his faith to his faith, from his realm to his realm, and you will know him for yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everyone. We've come to the end of this five-day series. I love you all. And it's been, it's not been easy. <laughs> It's not been easy, but we thank God all the same. Thank God all the same. We thank God all the same. God releases this thing and it comes heavy sometimes. And we thank God for giving us the strength and the capacity to carry these things. Because I tell you, it's not easy. Mm. It's not easy. I thank God for helping me this period. It's been very, very intense. My day taking, my nights taking, not because I want to come and talk here, no, but because this is how my day is. This is how my night is. Every time it makes no difference whether I'm talking to you or I'm not talking to anyone. I'm just in my corner. I'm just in my circle with Jesus. It's more than enough. One cannot get enough of him. Always, all the time. All the time. <laughs> One song came to my spirit now. Want everybody to know that Jesus died for me. My life I will give as long as I live to let everybody know. These are the yearnings in my heart that have come to this point where nothing and no one means anything. To me, except Jesus, Jesus alone, no heights of call will matter to him. Keep following him alone. Keep the fire burning. Let it burn to the next generation. Let your children know Jesus, 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 Jesus alone as your message, as your healer, as your baptizer, as your coming king, as your savior, as everything that you are. Thank you, Lord. Oof. Oh God, I thank you. That you alone will find us faithful. You alone will find us faithful of your pleasure, we will be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. It's so intense on me, people. It's so, so, so intense upon me. Thank you, Jesus. May he find us faithful. May he find us faithful. May he find us faithful in the name of Jesus. May he find us faithful in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Does anyone have anything to say? I am so heavy right now. It's so, so like getting me drunk. The Jesus that I drink, the Jesus that I be, the Jesus that I know, 
No one else matter to me. But Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I love you all. And God bless and keep you. In the name of Jesus. Oof. Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Oof. It's heavy here. It's so heavy here. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. I love you all. I love you all. I'm homebound. God bless you.